welcome to the Carry On Podcast, coming to you from my house and Heather's house. Uh, I am Terry, and you can follow me at Talola Knits at, uh, on Instagram and Talola Knits on Ravelry. Hi, I'm Heather, and you can follow me on Instagram at Notorious1 and on Ravelry at Notorious-1. All right, so we are social distancing. Yes. But we knew we had to get a podcast out because we kind of missed doing it. So, because we always have fun together. So we decided that we were going to try this and hopefully it works. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because we're filming on Zoom. Right. Which we have done Zoom. We're doing Zoom for knit nights. Right. Which is a lot of fun. Yeah, which is great fun. I'm yep. really glad we have that. Yes. Uh, we haven't recorded Zoom yet, and Terry's going to figure out how to get sort of a split screen going there. Also, we're each at our own house. <laughs> yes, we are. Somebody <laughs> in trouble for coming in. Looks like you have a visitor. Anyway, okay, okay. So, so I don't even know where to start again, but and he's freaking hammering. Okay, maybe you need to have a chat with your significant. <laughs> Hold on a We're second. Talking. Okay, let me, let me stop recording. Hold on. Okay. Okay, back. So we are at our prospective houses, and. Look at you guys can see my stash a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. Your cute calendar. And, and my calendar that uh, Beth made me that I won on. She didn't make it specifically for me, but that's the thing that I won at um, our Christmas party. My secret Santa? My secret Santa. And then you yeah. can see my broke, my broke down um, Swift. Swift. <laughs> Cause it's got rubber band on it. <laughs> Does it still work? It's rubber band so that it, it doesn't break. I gotta get myself a new one. Okay. <laughs> but I yeah, can't that's, find that's mine. Cool. Huh? I currently can't find mine. <laughs> Your Swift? Yeah, I think it's in a. I think it's in a bin. Uh oh. Hand winding for you. No, thank you. I know that's annoying. I know. Anyway, so, okay, so what are you knitting? What am I knitting? So we started, you and I, yeah. started a sweater together. Mm -hmm. And it's the Le Pouf Cardigan. Yes. The Yada from Hedgehog. Yes. How, how far are you on yours? I am this far. Not very far. Yeah. Ooh, pretty. So I started you with wrong me. Really? Yeah. I started with this color I have in my stash, and this is all hedgehog fiber. Mm -hmm. I believe this color is called Silence or Ghost. I don't remember which one. It is tonal. It's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. That it's tonal. And then this is one of her new colors, which I'm in love with. Now, how do you say that one anyway? Is that Liebling? Yes. Yeah, say it again. Liebling? What is I, I don't know what that means. I think it means beer in German or something like that. Okay. So this is one. You hold this double. Right. So right now I'm fading in the Liebling. So it's one of the Whisper or Ghost and one of the Liebling. Which I will be ending that shortly and then going double Liebling. Liebling. I love that color. And that, it's uh, this color, color. right? Like, I can do the whole sweater. Yeah. You do the whole thing out of this. Mm -hmm. The speckles of orange and purple. And then it's got this gray violet. Gray or something? Sorry? Like a gray wash over it? Yeah, or it's an underwash, like a, it's grayish purple, though. 
beautiful. I love it. And I didn't think I was going to use this color right away. So it's one of those things like you were talking about where you lay all your colors out and then you're like, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Once you get to the actual color. Right, right. And you're like, so, it's like it's painting with it. Like that's what yes. I was saying that it's painting with it. Totally. Painting with it. And I do that with shawls too. So mm -hmm. it's, it's no different then. But, you know, I mean, you have your outline or your idea of what you're going to do with it. And then, you know, it doesn't necessarily turn out like that. It's not necessarily going to go that way. And that's okay. So show me yours and then I'll show you the rest of my colors. Okay. So I've got only this much. Pretty. Um, I started off with like, what it's called urchin. It's, mm. a really, it's like white with purple speckles. You can't really see it. And then the next one is, shoot, what's the name of it? I don't remember. I have it somewhere in here. But it looks like this. It's a light, too, is it? It's light. It's a light purple. It's like a pinky purple. And it's oh, like I see it now. The green, neon green speckles, and then, like, some... So I've already did the transition. I love I've it. Done, I've done all the all the um, the white one, and I wasn't liking it very much because it was just too white for me. And then okay. so I started the transition quicker, pretty quick, and then now I'm into this one, and I can't remember the name of this one. I should know it and have my. Um, Notes. See our cup? I'm plugging our cup. Oh, yay! I don't know if I showed that before, but... No, you haven't. Hold it up higher, a little bit higher. There you go. Yay. Yay, our cup. Daydream. That's what it's called, Daydream. Is that one of our new colors? Because I haven't heard that color before. Um, newer. I don't know if it's newer, because it's old, because this is the old label. Oh, that's true. It is the old label. So that's Daydream, and the other one was called Urchin. This is the new label. Yeah. Her new label's cool. It's like the hologram. Yeah, yeah. There's the color that I was saying wrong. Liebling, yeah. I think that's how you say it, but... Well, close enough. Someone German will tell us that we're wrong. <laughs> that's okay, they can correct our pronunciation. Yes. So who, what's your next color? Um... I'm not really sure yet. I have, <laughs> I also ordered a color yesterday. <laughs> oh, you didn't tell me this. I know. And You're it's called bad. Jupiter. <gasps> okay, let's, what color is that one? Do you know? It's, well, I think it's a grayish purple speckled with a little bit of. I'm looking that up. It might be like labeling, but like more intense. I needed a medium color. Right. I had lights and not much mediums, and then I have darks. So I really needed – sorry, I just bumped the camera there. I need medium to make it blend. Right, right. So – and then I also actually have another color in mind I might get, which is terrible, but – and – What? What are you talking about? Where would you, where'd you order it from? I got it from Wool Winders, which I had never heard of before. Um, I'm not familiar with them, but I did see that color. And I'm not even familiar with that color. I've never seen that color. Um, you and I bought our color. Yeah. I mean, what, we had stuff from home, but we also bought stuff from our local yarn shop, which is where I work at Yarn Shop Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. which was awesome because she just got a bunch of yarn in. So most – I got the labeling there, and I'll just show these quickly. Yeah. Go ahead. You're looking I'm gonna look that. Yeah. I got my raven there, which is gorgeous. Is gorgeous. So that's probably my end, which will be by my wrist uh -huh. and around my waist. Gonna, most, maybe like, around, maybe the, right, the last part, right? Yeah, most likely. We'll see. Yeah, I'll pop, up, I'm, I'll pop up like what Lapoof looks like. Okay. It's a you free. And I both got insomnia. Mm -hmm. They can kiss each other. Go like this. Do a yarn kiss. 
Oh, they just love each other. <laughs> <laughs> They're twinsies. We can be twinsies together. Yeah, so we got those at the shop, and then I got this at the shop. Oh, this is beautiful. I love that one, too. So I love like a pistachio, like the pistachio green part of right. it. It's beautiful. Right. If you guys can see the speckles there. So this is going to be my next color after the leaf wing. At least I think it is. <laughs> so that'll be probably next. Yeah, that one looks like it'll work. But at home, I had Hush already. We have Hush at the shop, but I already had a most, like, three-four skein of Hush, which is mm -hmm. this. This is gorgeous purple. Yeah, I love that one. I wish I got I had that one. And then I also had purple, I believe. I don't have the tag. I'm almost positive. I'm absolutely positive it's Hedgehog, but I believe it's Purple Rain. Oh, yeah. That could also be my end. I'm right. not sure. So that's what I'm working with. Uh, at first, I was going to do the very light color first and then fade this in, which is awesome, would be awesome together. But when I was reading the pattern, she recommends that you don't use solid or tonal colors, which was interesting. Like she's saying speckled colors? Yes, she's saying speckled colors, and it totally makes sense because... She's saying that they will blend better. So, yeah. so if you use a solid in anywhere in there, you're going to get the stripey thing, which is fine right. if that's the effect you want. Right. But her patterns or her pattern looks really cool because except for the end, it's not having any solid in there. So, what I'm trying to say is she says to use solid either if you're going to use a solid or a tonal, do it at the beginning or end of your pattern. Right. So th this is why I didn't use this color because I would have had stripes here. That's true. Well, not what I was going for, but I'm okay. kind of bummed I don't have this in there yet. I possibly may work it in with a speckled. I'm not sure. Because I don't have to hold... Right. Two of the same color together. No, you don't. Make, you could just do a transition and then... Make that as a color. Make that as a color, yeah. So it's really cool because you can... I mean, as you know, and I feel like when we're talking, like we're talking, it's funny because this is a different kind of recording. We're talking to each other, mm -hmm. but we're also talking to everybody out there. <laughs> That's true. So it's interesting um, it's an interesting way to record, I think, but, uh, yeah, it's not much of a stripe here, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Right, right, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like that look that it has a stripe. I don't mind it if that's what I'm gonna do through the whole thing, or I like it in a shawl. I don't know if so much, as much in a sweater. Unless right. I'm doing a stripey sweater, but this idea is more of a gradient blend. Right. That fades. Yeah, I like that it's a gradient. It's not like the, because you know how sometimes like a fade will have like the stripes in there? Like I'm, yeah. I don't have any of my faded work with me like right here. But um, yeah, it has a stripes and I'm kind of, I, I want to do it like the gradient, like you were saying. So from that. Light it, to dark is yeah. how we're going. Yes. But you could totally do from dark to light or whatever. You could not. You could do it all one color. It's still right. cool. So that's what we're working on, both of us. It's a, it's a mini knit along. It is a mini knit along. <laughs> I can't find Jupiter. Okay. Well, now, okay, hold on. I'm looking for it. We on. can throw a picture of it up later. Yeah, I'll find it later. And I'll show it on the next podcast, hopefully. Okay, so. It'll definitely be here by then, but. This is the order mine's going to go in. So after this one, mm -hmm. I'm going to do. This is Oracle. Pretty green. By Hedgehog. And then this is the Insomnia that we got. And then I was going to do Graphite, which is just like a gray. At the nice. so. I love it. I love it. So that's my sweater number three. Number three. 
Let's see what else you're working on. Um, so I'm sorry, Cindy, but I didn't finish my sweater. She <laughs> told me that I had to finish my sweater by Saturday. So I'm not in the show on the podcast, but you're going to be in timeout. I'm on timeout. <laughs> Cindy is going to be mad. So I'm all tangled here. Okay. So this is the black thorn. Oh my gosh. Sweater by Lily Turner. Let me see if I'm sewing it right. Yes. Beautiful. So I am at the sleeves and I was doing them two at a time, but I stopped because I didn't want to do two at a time color work because there's color work at the sleeves. Okay. See right there. Yeah. So I didn't want to do two at a time color work because I knew that that was going to be really annoying <laughs> to have like all the color doing the color work at the same time. So okay, you're going to have all those balls of yarn hitting you off. Different right, right, and right. that was kind so, of maddening. Do the color work and then I'm going to stop and then do the color work on this one and then stop and then do two at a time again. So that I'll end up with the same part of the sleeve, the same length, because this is um, a cable rib. Right. So I think that's a great plan. Yeah. To make it even and everything. Make it very even. So, because I don't, I've had that happen where I've knit a sweater, and I think even this one that I'm wearing, I didn't do it at the same time because it's all color work. Mm -hmm. So they're a little off. Or maybe my body's crooked. I don't know. So did you know that one of your arms is longer than the other? Probably. Like That's most likely everybody's is. That's probably why I'm thinking that they're off. It's like, I don't know. You can kind of see it right. You probably knit it perfect, but your arms are just whatever. different lengths. <laughs> when we, so I learned that when we went to um, Stitches and I took that class. Oh, okay. That's one of the things they taught you? Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things they said. I knew okay. that people's feet, like when you make socks and whatnot, I knew people's feet were usually their feet differed, right? Not yeah. everybody. Some their feet are the same length, but most okay. people have like a different foot size. Not maybe size, but different foot length. Yeah. Not like so a, a huge arm, difference, but just a little bit. Right. Your arm length is as well. I know for a fact my son has one foot bigger than the other because it's not noticeable visually, but when he would be running when he was little and he was in in Crocs, uh -huh. one Croc would always fly out. <laughs> so far, I'm like, yeah, that's the foot that's a little bit smaller than the other. <laughs> that's cute. Pretty funny. And he kept going. He was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> So that one I'm working on, that's one of them. And the third one is the sorrel. Oh my goodness. And I'm working on this one. Woo! That's beautiful. Can you bring it closer? Yes. Look at those pops of green and purple. So this actually is turning out pretty cool that I'm looking at it. So this is the first color. I'm doing a fade on this one as well. And this is the first color up here with a gray, charcoal gray mohair. Wow. Oh, that's the La Bienname. This is the, yeah, I got this at Stitches West. This is the, the La Bienname that I got at Stitches West. But and it's coming up way darker than it actually is in real life. Like in the ball thing, it looks like black, but it's not. It's Yeah, it's not. It's more like a charcoal, charcoal gray. But yeah, so like these, this up here, this top part are these two together. So it's kind of like beautiful. It's, it totally makes it a different fabric, you know? And Absolutely. I just started the next color, which is this one. I don't know. I should take these out of here so you could see it a little bit better. But yeah. And what yarn is the, what's your colored yarn, the base of this sweater? Um, these are both uh, Western Sky Knits. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, no. This one is Western Sky Knits. This is dyed in the wool. Uh, not, here, let me see. This is 
Okay, this one is this one is graffiti. Western Gra Sky Knits. Graffiti. And this one. Ugh, not even prepared. I was really impressed with her booth at Stitches. Oh yeah, Western or yeah, hers is real real good. Western Sky, yeah. I wasn't familiar with her stuff I'm and I have it in you. Pardon? I'm glad I showed you because she is awesome. Yeah, I hadn't been knit anything of hers yet or but I am really wanting to get some of her yarn. Her colors are gorgeous and the bases feel Yeah, so I good. love her yarn. I love her yarn. I think she should be like high up there or, like, you know, like the big names, you know, that everybody talks about. I mean, I I think people know. I mean, obviously. But I mean, like not everybody knows. Like everybody knows um you know, like Magpie, everybody knows, you know, those indie brands, you know, Ritual Dyes and all that stuff. She should be up there, I think. She should yeah. be more famous is what you're trying to say. Yeah, I'm trying to say. <laughs> but then at the same time. how awesome her, her, her yarn is. I, yeah, for how awesome her yarn is. Uh, like I told you, I don't know if I want people to know. <laughs> we I want it all for myself. We do and we don't. <laughs> we do and we don't, yeah. We don't want her to get too famous that we can't get her yarn when we want it. <laughs> <laughs> but we want her to be famous enough to be rich and happy. <laughs> now that we have that settled. Yeah. But, um, okay, so the other one was called, and I really like this one, it's called um, Dyed in the Wool. Nice. And that's the really white one. Uh, man. It's this one. And it's called I Tripped into a Zombie. <laughs> love the name of course yeah cool yes but I like it because it's it's like really light but it's got like the pops of the green and then like that I guess it's supposed to be the blood I don't know so why is neon green always associated with zombies you ever wonder that I don't know toxic have you ever noticed that toxic stuff toxic waste yeah that's yeah. a good, good guess but then you could say that about like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> I don't watch that show, sorry. You didn't watch it when you were young? No. Well, I didn't either. My brother did, so. <laughs> no. Yeah. That was not something I was interested in. <laughs> but, so yeah. I'm, I'm knitting right now, which I've never done on our podcast. So I just wanted to show this again. So that's the start, and then there's, like, some really great, um, pulls, I guess you could say, from the um, drop stitch, or not the drop stitch. What is it called? It's not a drop stitch, but it's called like a elongated stitch. Elongated stitch, right here, but like mm -hmm. it came out pretty good. So now you can knit on this, but I'm trying to force myself to finish my Blackthorn sweater because I'm almost there. <laughs> nice, and I need to finish. You said somebody said there was a cowl written out for that stitch, or no? There is, thinking. but it's not all in that stitch, in that pattern of that stitch. Um, yeah, where's my phone? There it is. Um, I think they're doing something, like, it's similar. Like, I just, I think the border of the cowl. Um, let me look that up, and I'll put it up there. For us, but let me look it up so I can show you. Because I really like the stitch pattern, but I don't know that I want to make that sweater. But I would make yeah, the whole sweater. Pardon? Yeah, the whole sweater. You don't want to make the whole thing. Probably not. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh, it's called Calliope Nest. Oh, I'm so wrong. Why did I think that? What? Okay, I thought that she was doing this. In that pattern, that drop pattern, but I guess not. Not. She, what? Oh, because I was looking at her Instagram, and she said she used the leftover yarn from her sweater to make this cowl. Okay. That's, That's pretty cool. I'll check that one out, though. That looks See, really Oh, cool. yeah. It does, like, it does use a little bit of that stitch. Kind of, sort of. It's a different one, but it's like a crossover. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. 
I can kind of see it. So it's the calliope cowl. Calliope nest cowl. Nest. As in a bird's nest. Okay. But yeah. So, so recording like this is interesting because I cannot see myself really. And like when I'm holding stuff up, I can see you good because you're the full screen. But I'm this well, tiny little square of myself. So uh, it's just interesting because I can't really see if like, you're how we usually record. We can right. see each other very well and we're holding things up. So that's challenging. And also, I think another challenging thing is, I think we're more talking over each other easily, right? Right. <laughs> like, because we're not in the same room. So I don't know if there's a little delay, but so excuse that, guys, if we're yeah. interrupting each other. But we're, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Oh, so we did want to talk about, like, what we did last week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? So last week we made an appointment and we gave blood at the Red Cross. And there's a huge demand. Um, there's a shortage for it. I used to be a blood donor before my son was born for a lot of years. And I donated to the Lucia Packard Hospital too as well. So I used to do both. And then I think I did platelets at one point. Um, which is, is that different. more complicated? No, I only did it once because they had asked me if I would do it. And it was only, it's the same thing pretty much, I think. Okay. And this, this was a long while ago because when you're breastfeeding and stuff, you don't give blood either. Okay. So I haven't given blood for a long time. So this was a good opportunity to be able to do that. And it's, you know, it's essential for the Red Cross. So we did that. We recorded it. And we, uh, Terry and I stayed, you know, six feet apart from each other. We took safety precautions. And obviously the Red Cross knows what they're doing. Right. They had people spaced out and, right. and everything for the waiting and the whole process. Everything was very safe and clean. Right, and they took our temperatures and twice. Yeah. So, and yeah. The stuff that they usually do, but I don't know if I remember them taking temperature, but you guys should check that out. It's, I think it's going to be a good video. Right, we're going to attach it to the end of this one. Or do you want to do it? Um, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. We'll, we'll figure that part out. But the point is, it's safe to give it. They need it. They need it terribly. And they don't need it because you don't give blood to a coronavirus victim. What you're, what's happened is that they need blood because people who were going to donate didn't donate. They lost donations. Like the, their normal, like right. they're saying their, um, like the high school and the, corporate and the college donation drives that they do all the time, they're not able to do those right now. Yeah. They so, can't set up where they, they can set that up. Because right, they're nobody there anyway, everybody's not working. So, or going to school. So there's no point. So they lost, what was it? A hundred thousand donations. Yeah. At least a hundred thousand, probably so, more now, but they can't go, they can't social distance people there. That would be like creating a crowd. So they can't do that. Right. So now, just like you're saying, it's appointment, and you can walk in, but you obviously are ta they're taking all the precautions. Right. So, yeah, we'll have a thing. We won't. We don't need to go into it more probably now, but we have a little video of it, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good for us. Yeah. And we did it because we wanted to do it and hang out. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. What so, else? I got a question sure. for you. What, so we could just talk about, like, staying at home and, like, how are, what are you doing? What's going on for you? Oh, I'm making sourdough. 
Are you? I'm excited. Yes. I'm making I saw your picture. Yes. And you, you pointed me to the um, blog that you recommended and I, it's called the perfect loaf. Mm -hmm. And I am excited because I think today's the fourth day and my starter's working well. I like it. The thing was so bubbly. <laughs> yeah, it was really bubbly. So I'm excited. And what I'm really, really excited about is just, it's just water and flour. That's it. It's water and flour. And this morning I was talking to some of my family members and one of them is, well, uh, it's a couple, they're vegan. My cousin and her husband are vegan. And um, I was telling them about it, that it's just water and flour. And then when you go and make it, it's just water and flour and salt. So when you make the bread, so right. it's like, you know, you put whatever you want into it. And I'm excited to, um, to do it. And yeah. my parents are going to be the guinea pig because it makes two loaves. So I'm going to have one and go to my parents and my mom's all, that's fine with me. Nice. Like all happy and excited to get her own loaf. So that's cool. hoping that it, it turns out because I know that it's really challenging. People are like, oh yeah, it's challenging to do, but yeah. Like it's I probably you wouldn't think, go ahead. You wouldn't think I'm no bread it, like pro or anything. I'm in the beginning stages of my process of learning too. Right. But you would think that it would be so simple because it is, such simple ingredients right and people have been doing it since the beginning of time right you know like making it and they the ways they made it was out of necessity right and it's interesting because they didn't have yeast so they had to do the natural leavened bread is what you're doing you're making your own starter mm -hmm. so it's just interesting because <laughs> it's not easy sourdough is not easy yeah it's I'm a huge learning curve yeah, I, I know, but I, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm excited. I think it'll work out because usually my stuff works out when I, when I make stuff. So usually, so. totally. Look at your sweater. <laughs> that also worked out. What are you wearing? This is the timely sweater. I think I've have I shared this on the podcast before. I don't remember. I think you wore it before, but I just love it. Yeah, it's the timely, and this is the yarn that I use. Um. I think this is Hello Stella. Oh, but I'll put it on the I'll put it down on the bottom here. Um, but it's like a sparkly base, and it's called the Goblin King. Mm -hmm. Love it. Reference to David Bowie. So Love I have it. To get this, and I had a lot left over. I don't know what I'm gonna make with this, but I really like it. You can just give it to me. If you want it, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I mean. Totally. If I don't have a, a, a thing for it, you can have it. Like, if I don't have, like, plans for it, I'm like, I'm just teasing. <laughs> you can come over and go through my stash. If I don't have plans for it, you can have it. I can't come over now. I know. Not soon, but not yet. Hopefully, hopefully sooner than later. But, um, yeah, so that's this. Yes, and I like it because it's, like, and I, and I put, um, buttonholes in it but I've lost the buttons so I don't know what I don't think you need to button it I know I really don't need to button it but it's it's like really oversized and at first when I first made it I didn't like it because look at how oversized it is it's really big on me but I like it though the way it is I like it without the buttoning I think sometimes when those sweaters are buttoned they look really little girly like childish oh, right right it's just really oversized, like cardigan, and but I like it so because I like the sleeve length, and maybe I should stand up a little bit. Yeah. See, just I like but, it. I remember you wore it on one of our other podcasts. I think I did, but it's since it's a cardigan, it's just one of those things you could just tuck on and stuff and walk around the house in. So. Yes, and still look fabulous. Yes. So, okay, so we talked about my sourdough experience. What are you doing? Are you baking too? I saw that you had stuff going. Yeah, I'm not doing sourdough right now. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, at first, I was a little concerned if I would have enough flour to keep a sourdough starter going. Uh-huh. Because you have to feed it once a week if you keep it in the fridge. But I do have enough flour. Because flour and yeast are so hard to find right now. Right. Like, the shelves are just empty. Right. So, so you got to get you got to get there at the right time, I guess. I had some flour already from Costco that was organic. Like, two big things of it. Mm-hmm. And then um, I had some yeast, and then my friend gave me some more yeast, so I'm I'm set with that. Uh, so I making breads that are what did I make? I made an olive loaf. Yes, I saw that. Which I loved. I want some. Was- back. Uh, oh, you want some? <laughs> yes. When we all have knit night again, I'm going to make us olive loaf. Okay. That was from this book, which I really like this book. Ooh. Yes. It's got great pictures. Um, I got this love recipe books that have pictures in them. I know. Look, it's like step pictures. Yes. And every bread has pictures of the bread and make it. I love that about uh, books, recipe books with pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Yeah. This is, I recommend this. I really like this book. I just, um, I got it as a gift for my birthday. And it's got all kinds of different breads in it. It has sweet breads, uh, muffins, bagels, flat breads. There's artesian breads, croissants, all kinds of stuff. Ooh, so I just delved into this. That was the first thing I made from this. And I was really happy with it. The olive bread? Yes. Um, this book I also had a lot for my birthday. My birthday was in January. It wasn't like my birthday just happened, but, uh, these are my, <gasps> I got this one for my birthday too. And this is like, you know, this bakery is in San Francisco mm-hmm. and they they have other spots in California too, but they're local. Mm-hmm. I've never been there. I'd love to go there when everything opens back up. Um, this go. is fun. We should go. Yeah, we definitely need to. And it's all about, um, this is about sourdough bread, I think, mm-hmm. mostly. And I've read some of it. And, yeah, yeah. That's, a, so that's more specific to yeah, that. And then here's my, uh, here's my other one that I've had for years now. And I love this book and this guy, he's. Awesome. I love the little stories that he tells. Here's him on the back. He's not alive anymore. Um, mm-hmm. uh-huh. um, his book does not have pictures of stuff. Oh, okay. So it's not that kind of a book. Hey, I guess we're doing book review. <laughs> yeah, but I love book. his book. I totally right, recommend right. it. This is the one I made the Cuban bread from that I just did. Uh, super quick, easy recipe. It was only 15 minutes of rise time. The wow. one, the other one I made in here that I really loved was his, it's called the first loaf. So he used to teach classes of how to make bread and everything. And this one is just called the first loaf. And it makes this awesome sandwich bread and you get two loaves of it. And it's just a white bread and it's, delicious I need to make that one again because I want we need some sandwich bread around here that isn't from the store yeah Uh, also he says a little story about it and why he likes it he has nice writing in it and it and tells you breaks everything down tells you how long each step takes so even though he doesn't have pictures he breaks everything down so this is excellent book Oh, yeah, that is cool. So this is Bernard Clayton's new complete book of breads. And that's that's what I'm working from right now. So those are fun. And everybody in your house is like, yes, when you make it. Because I love the way a house smells when bread is baking. It smells so good. I know. It does. No, my husband and my son were so... <laughs> my son loves olives. Like, he has the salt tooth like I do. Mm-hmm. There's a sweet tooth. I think there's a salt tooth too. I'm not sure. We have to check, 
check up on that's that. Game, but we, that's ours. We'll claim it. Salt tooth rates. We have a salt tooth, and I have one. My husband does Me not. Too. I love olives. Oh my gosh! So he was eating the olives out of the jar that I was making, or he was trying to get the one. I was like, "Don't take those," because I had to, you know, wash them and dry them and stuff. Right. And I'm right. like, "Get the ones out of the jar." So he was eating the olives out of the jar, um, and. I was like, okay, you can have those. So we we'll make the bread, and he's like, all, he's always excited when I make bread, and he's like my first tester, and he tastes it, and he eats the whole thing, and I'm like, do you want any more? And he's like, yes, but can you? I'd like some without olives in it. And I'm like, okay, well, it's olive bread, so <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Yeah. And how come all of this, you don't like the olives? He ate it. I don't know. That's, it was, that's funny. Maybe I don't want plain bread now. Well, because he's seven. So seven-year-olds don't like things inside their things. I right. think. Like they don't like, he doesn't want seeds inside of his muffins right. yeah. or stuff in his stuff, you know? Unless it's like a chocolate chip cookie. Oh, and that's okay. Yeah. Well. Inside of a... <laughs> Right. So basically, olive bread is not for the people in my house, but it is for me. And for me and my dad loves olive bread, and my family would, love, <laughs> friends would love olive bread. So I won't stop that making that it. bread, Heather. People will eat that bread. I know. I won't stop making it because it's delicious. But anyway, that's my bread story right now. You know what I think is cool, though, about the um, the San Francisco bakeries? Because my mom was telling me that I don't know which San Francisco bakery. It might be Boudin. But she said that there's one up in San Francisco that's had the same starter since the 1800s. Oh. Isn't that crazy? And I was like, what? Yeah, yeah they and, kept it, and they kept it alive for, like, over 100 years. And that's why it tastes different than anybody else's stuff. Right. But, yeah. It's interesting. Like, I'm not really even qualified to talk about bread. But <laughs> that's what I know about the bread I'm doing. Yeah, I just think that's so cool that they, I don't know how that would happen. Like, they kept it alive through, like, wars and, you know, Earthquakes and everything. <laughs> like, grab the bread starter. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what? Like, they moved or what they do? Yeah, well, I guess, like, the brick ovens and stuff like that also help, you know? I don't know. That's very interesting. I love stuff that has history. Like, our knitting has history, even though its history is strange and hard to track. And right, right. Like, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to track down even where it started knitting right or what the first knit thing was or any of that but there's there is a lot of history for it and I think that's super interesting with any hobby and I mean well this is our passion not just our right. hobby right this is our work and our art but I think it's very interesting and weren't you a history major yes yes I have a degree in history and I'm doing nothing with it but, but I can tell you a lot of facts. <laughs> well, what kind of, what history? Was it world history or? Um, I did it, it, I went to UC Santa Cruz and I got a degree in um, European history with a minor in English la literature, English language literature. So that means That's I like cool. history and I like to read. Yes, I love to read too. So... Oh, yeah, I should show you guys what I am reading. What are you reading? This is what I am reading right now. It is called House of Earth and Blood, and the series is called Crescent City. And this is Sarah J. Moss's new book. She did a bunch of, like, uh, new adult fantasy. Like, I'm way into fantasy books. Like, that's my, my genre. That's what I love to read. But um, this is her newest series that she started. She did, she has like A Court of Thorns and Roses and the other one, Throne of Glass, I think that's the series. Um, a lot of people buy yarn off that book. 
Yes, a lot. Like, well, a Court of Thorn and Roses, like one of the yarn dyers that I adore, Volenvine, she did a whole entire series. Like a lot of people are dying yarn off of that. Um, so like a fandom yarn kind of thing. So this is the the newest book in from that author. And I like it so far. I mean, I'm only like 200 pages in, 240, but it's an 800-page book. Looks pretty thick. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. But um, it's got sex in it, so if you're not into that, I wouldn't do it. Read it. But <laughs> most of her books are have like explicit scenes in it so not uh -huh. teenagers or well if you want to let your kid read that that's fine i don't know you do you but for younger kids don't <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so there are explicit scenes in there but it's all fantasy and it's huge world building and it's it's pretty good i like that stuff so that's what i'm reading right now nice so and i and i can Depending on the the thing that I'm working on, I can read and knit at the same time. So nice. I do Audible, right, for knitting, and I haven't read a regular book in a long time. I mean, the bread books, yes, like about bread and right. <laughs> you know, like I mean, and online reading, right. But as far as a regular book, book. Not a long time. I don't get, like, time to, like, really sit and read. And then if I did, if I did do that before bed, I w it would you make me fall asleep. Yeah. I mean, I read for my son, obviously. So that's the reading I do right now <laughs> from an actual book. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any finished objects? No. No. Because. You're flirted almost, but, yeah. And you told me I should have one. Right. I have mine. Yes, let's hear it. Yours. I've I have heard to block it. it, though. So it's not blocked. And okay. it's not woven in the ends, but here it is. Woo! Baby. I, I love it. Mine? What do you, are you going to block yours? Oh, yeah. I was thinking about it. You didn't block yours? Mm-mm. I just started wearing it. Maybe I won't. Woven the ends. Yeah. This is the Calamaya that I've been working on. You guys all know. We'll yes. put everything in show notes, so I'm not even worried about saying that. But mm -hmm. yes, I love it. So so. Put it on. Let's let's see. Let's see. It doesn't. It doesn't go with this outfit, but it's super soft. We want to see anyway. Yeah, there you go. There is one end that you said. I didn't do the stretchy bind off like you said. I So I just did a regular bind off. Oh, okay. And it still flared out? A little bit, and, and it would anyways, because no matter what, when you do that with ribbing, it will always flare out. Because right. ribbing goes like, do, 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 like a snake. Right, right, right. Ribbing goes like this, if that makes any sense to anybody. Right. So it will flare out no matter what, but it did, that was a good tip because it did make it flare out less. Right. It didn't need to be any stretchier. So we recommend if you do this cowl, do a regular bind off. Right. Did you do a bigger needle? Nope. You just did a regular, okay. The same. No, nope. I wouldn't do a bigger needle and I wouldn't do it in pattern, meaning I wouldn't do the bind off knit, purling, knitting, and purling oh. to my I just do it straight up by and off. Mm -hmm. And it works just fine. That's a good tip. And like you said, there is one edge that is that does like it flares more, which is great for I'm not sure which way I'm wearing it right now, but that's great yeah, for wearing it along your chest, it'll be better. Yeah. Right. The sh where your shoulders are, make yeah. the have it be like that. But the drape of that mm -hmm. is so beautiful. I love it. Doesn't go with lip gloss. We talked about that. Mohair and lip gloss are a no go. <laughs> but I usually wear lip gloss and I love mohair. So you're going to have to. Something you got to deal with as a knitter. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. this is my other finished object. Ooh, dos. Yeah, don't get too excited. It's pretty tiny. <laughs> oh, the little bluebird of happiness. Yes, tweet, tweet. 
We totally need a little bluebird of happiness. Everybody needs this. And you guys, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. And it knits up so quick and it's really cute. And it's a great way to practice short rows. Oh. And we will have the information. If you just put in the pattern name, Little Bluebird of Happiness on Ravelry, it'll come up. The um, pattern writer's name we'll put down below. Yeah. So I don't know it offhand, but it is so cute. And it does make you happy. I love me free patterns. Yeah, it's cute. It's written good. I did two of them. I did one with, she does wrap and turn in the pattern. And that one got a little more, you know how sometimes when you substitute German short rows for a pattern that doesn't have German short rows in it, that it just gets irritating? Yeah. Because you have to keep remembering to knit one more. Right. Than a wrap and turn row. Right. So it might not work out for a smaller thing like that, right? Right. So this one I did did wrap and turn and I like the way it looks better. The first one I did German short rows. And it's fine. But this one came out cleaner. Just yeah. with wrap and turns. You can see the little tail business. Nice. So, super fun. So that's that. And that's my only FO's finished objects. Yep, I didn't finish anything. I don't know. Okay. I told you why I didn't finish those though. But my blackthorn, because the sleeves are a hundred stitches around. That is a lot of stitches. <laughs> so that's two hundred. Yeah, two hundred stitches. Because I did it uh, two at a time. But yeah, don't feel bad about that stuff. <laughs> So it's a lot, um, but I'll show you the way that it's supposed to look so that you can see that it's kind of like a poofy. And it's not a regular sleeve. I mean, this sleeve has, yeah, the sleeve, it's a big sleeve and it has cabling at the bottom and it has right. fair aisle in it. It's a lot to it. Yeah. The sleeves are really big. And they're supposed to be like the style of the sleeves. So it's kind of swancho ish. Yeah. So it's it's big and it's poofy and that's just the way it's supposed to be. I can't wait to see you wear it. Yeah, oh I can't wait to. Let me see if I got another good picture of it right here. That's not a good picture, but that's okay. Just very um oversized. Cause I think there's only like one, two, three, four, five sizes. But it fits up to a side bus circumference of 54. Okay. So it's pretty. Pretty size inclusive? Yeah, pretty size inclusive. I mean, I think that there's a debate on whether it has to be like 60 or something like that, then it's size inclusive. But Oh, is that right? Yeah. I guess. I, I, guess. I don't know. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's. And then she came out with another pattern um, that I had. She, she has this um, new one out, but um, I'm in love with the, the newest one. Let me show you. I, I said that, like, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it, but yeah. It's called, <laughs> Under, it's called Undersong. Okay. I showed you this. I know I showed you this, and I was like, oh, my God, I have to have that. Oh, yes. That's beautiful. And I love the colors that she did. It's very different. Right. Well, this is like a tester who did it, and she did it as a fade. Oh, okay. Right. Like, she did it as a fade, and I really like that idea of, of the fade. But the original one looks kind of like that. Like, that's not the, that's another tester, but. Looks so different. It totally so different. looks, it's like a different sweater. And you can do, it's got different um, ways you could do the sleeves. You could do, this. that's the original. You can't really see it because it's black mm -hmm. or blue. But you could right. do the sleeves like a bell sleeve or a, um, or the bishop sleeves. I think that's what they're called when they're wide. Uh, yeah, wide. Like puff sleeve or something. And so I would do. I don't know what a bishop sleeve is. We'll have to find out yeah 
I think bell sleeves are when they're wide, and a bishop right. sleeve is when it's wide and then gathered. I think. Okay. But yeah, this, I wasn't in love with it until I saw this. Until I saw yeah. this. That one is that one is incredible. That one is so beautiful, and I think I can't. I have stash for it. I think you're gonna do some more colors. Like I, I can show you my idea for it. If, okay. Yeah. I'll show you my idea for it. Um, so this is future knitting. This is fantasy knitting. I don't know if it's fantasy because you're going to do it. Yes, I'm totally going to do it. Okay. This is what's good that I'm like right here at my house because I've got all my stuff. I know. <laughs> okay. So. Handy. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. So this is Woolen Vines, um, the Strange Brew, which is her one of a kind. And this is on her Neville base, which is a single. Was that the one you recently acquired? Yes, I just got this one. Okay. And it's called Melt With You. So you can't get this anymore. Sorry, I shouldn't be showing it. But look, at it's got my <laughs> Make everybody sad. <laughs> yeah. Pretty. Well, her stuff is hard to get anyway. Yes. It is. So, um, and then I was going to do, fade it into this Ushita. Mm -hmm. I think that's how you say it, Uchita. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I was going to fade that in to that. And then I was going to fade it into this. And then use this one I think for the color work hmm. but I've got another four skeins of this one so maybe mm -hmm. I might just use this the whole thing in this and then use this as for the color work the white color work and this is all you cheetah mm -hmm. low base 100% super wash it's pretty so I don't know I have to think about it. But yeah. Those are my options right now. My fantasy knitting. I like I it. I did buy the pattern, so I can do it. I just, I've got three on the skate, on the needles. So, you I'm kind of, kind of like, need them off the needles and then start a new one. Yes, I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed. <laughs> and I want it because I want to finish my Blackthorn. Mm -hmm. And then get to getting this one done. I think this one, the um, the poof. I think this one's gonna be short. Yeah, it, it's not a long sweater. It's not gonna be a, a, It's not gonna take a long time because you're holding yarn double. So right, fingering double. Yeah, on a size six needle. Right, and I didn't swatch. <laughs> <laughs> but you should swatch. Always swatch. <laughs> but. We recommend watching. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not, it's do as I say, not as I do. Okay. I'm not very good at it. But you know what, though? Like, I've made so many, I kind of figure I've made so many sweaters, I can kind of tell the way it's going to turn out. And then, I know that this is too big. Like, I kind of measured it. And I know the gauge is too big. big. Hmm? The gauge is too big. 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 Okay. Yeah. The gauge is too big, so I decided, and and I knew that before I got all my increases for the shoulders, because this is a top down, so you're going like the, all the way down. So you'll increase less. So I'm going to increase less, and I'm going to increase for the size below, which is a large. So I'm making a large in this, and nice. So that, that that's how I'm going to fix it. Okay. And I, I like the fabric. I like how, I mean, it's a little bit more open, but I like the way that it is. And I like hedgehog. Open. Sorry? It doesn't look open here, from here. I don't know. Maybe. But um, I like the way the hedgehog is because it's not, it's really soft. And then once you wash it, it becomes softer. The hedgehog sock. Yes. Huge fan of hedgehog. Oh, I love their colors. Huge. Her oh. colors, her yarn. Yeah. yeah. The sock, especially. Yeah. For me. So versatile. 
I mean, it's okay. so, I've made I've made like baby hats from it and stuff like that. I think that's my fantasy knitting. Do you have any fantasy knitting? I do, but I don't. I mean, I always have fantasy knitting. <laughs> I don't have anything with me or anything that I'm thinking of in particular. Yeah, but I do have one thing I got in the mail. <gasps> yes, Are you bad Just came today. Were you bad? I'm sorry. Were you bad? No, I was good. You're a good girl. Yeah. Okay, let's see. <gasps> Isn't it awesome? It. it just came this morning. And oh, it's mustache so yarn. And it just makes me happy. It's like Easter, but it still has black in it, which I love black. Yep. And the colorway is all sorts. I love it. Isn't it fun? And so these will be socks. Oh my gosh. And it's so soft. Her yarn is just, just awesome. Awesome stripes, awesome feel, everything. And she shipped really quick, even in the apocalypse. And so I wanted to support her and the apocalypse. Yes. Yarn comes still in a timely manner. Yes, even it says, it says stash in good health. <laughs> this isn't going to be in stash too long. I might need to cast these on because I want something bright and happy looking. And fun, yeah. Right now. And they're not going to be able to be cranked into socks. So they're going to have to be hand knit socks for now. Right, because you can't crank right now because you can't go over Cindy's house. Our friend who has the machine. Right. So there's no cranking going on. At least for oh. me. Yeah, I have her. Um, for other people. This is I her have... dark side of the moon colorway. Uh oh. Ooh. You just whip that out quick. Because I'm sitting right next to my stuff. She's <laughs> like this. And I have this. And I have this. And this. <laughs> Don't hit yourself in the head. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> no, I said you know. Oh yeah, I'm all. Out. <laughs> and pull it all out. But yeah, you know, I I haven't done this one yet, and I really, really, really want to do it. But I haven't. I just haven't. I've got. You don't want it. You can start that one. Why start this one? Okay. Okay. This so that's not. It. It's rainbowy, you know. It is. And it's, it is. It's supposed to be like um, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Right. You know that album? So it's yeah. black and gray stripes. It's like the cover with the triangle, right? Right, the, right, right. Now the rainbow, what other, it's a prism. Yeah, the prism, yeah. It's really, yeah. really cool. It is. I, I love I that she does them, like, they're two separate. Like, you can see that they're two separate. Yes. yes. They're already yes. round, so that she calls them what it must match skeins. Right, watch, I'll take it out. So when I first got it, when I first bought her yarn, which is, I have, I think, three skeins of her yarn. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it didn't come in a separate thing. But actually. But it does, but it's tricky. Like, you think it doesn't. Wrap it, yeah. But she's a genius. Look how she wraps that. Yeah. Bam. Perfecto socos. Yeah. They will match spot on. Right. That's what I, I love. Want them to, but yeah, I love that. So, yeah, and I, um, she has like a lot of. I just love her colors. Like right now, oh she's in her Easter colors, and you just had, you just got her Easter color. Tell me, yeah, this is her one of her Easter colors. Tell me about the cascarones. Cascarones. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Tell me about that okay. color. Wow, you're. So tricky. let me show you. That because you you sent me a picture so I can find it real quick. So these are her cascarones colors. So gorgeous. Um, wait, I want that one now too. Yeah, I want this one too. But I I just bought myself some hedgehog from the shop, so I can't. I'm trying to be <laughs> good. I'm trying to be really really good. Um, I saw these last year and I was like, oh, I should have just got it last year. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway. Okay, well, what are cascarones? Cascarones are a Mexican tradition, 
and it's for Easter. And what you do is you save the shells of the egg. So you crack the egg in a certain way to get the egg white and yolk out, but you hold on to the shell and it holds its shape. And there's a certain way to do it. And you probably put a hole at each end and you blow out the no. center. Mm -mm. No, no. Um, okay. You know, the, you know how an egg shape is like, there's a pointy side and a, and a flat yeah. rounder side. Right. You, the rounder side has an air pocket, basically. Huh. Okay. So what you do is you crack that rounder side, and you just and then you kind of crack it, and you have to be really careful, and you kind of peel around a little bit until you get a big enough hole. Like if the egg is that big around and big enough. Anyway, I'm sure you, if you look it up, you can find it. <laughs> There'll be a tutorial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do a tutorial. Anyway, so there's a way you, you get the egg out, you shake it all out. And you, my grandparents and my parents and, you know, my aunt and my uncles, they all used to save all the eggs for us when we were kids. So from like around January to like April, we would start saving egg shells. And we would okay. have, you know, for breakfast and stuff like that. And then you dye the eggs like you normally would, you know, the bright colors and all that stuff. And then after they're dry, then you fill the egg shells with confetti or candy, but it's usually confetti. And you, then you put a little paper mache glue, and then you put the paper mache on top of the egg. And this is a lot of work. It is. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And so you hide the eggs, and then the purpose of the confetti is that you smash them on people's heads. It sounds fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. And there's confetti all over the house or outside. But when I, I remember when I was a kid, like, there would be money. That my grandpa would put money in them sometimes. And there would be, like, a golden one where it would be, um, like, you'd get a dollar. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so you'd, some of them would have coins. And some of them would have, like, you know, the little chocolate, foiled chocolates on the inside. And it didn't, and you know, my, my boy cousins, they didn't care about whether it was, it was confetti or not. They would still smash them on people's heads. <laughs> nice. You could tell it was confetti because it would like, you'd shake it. Lighter. Would, yeah. Yeah. But they didn't care. They would smash it anyway. Because <laughs> they're boys. Yeah, they're boys. And that's what boys do. But yeah, that's what a cascarona is, or cascarones. Um, so. That's cool. I had never heard of it before, the socks thing. Yeah. So that's what I was like. Oh, I need to get those because it's that'd be so much fun to have those color socks and Chris or um, Easter. Easter and all that stuff. Yeah, neat. Yeah, and I did it for my kids when they were growing up, and they ended up because they were a little bit older because they're my stepkids, so they were a little bit older, <laughs> and they ended yeah. up pelting each other. <laughs> <laughs> it turned violent. It turned it's violent. <laughs> But I also, I was, I knew it was going to turn on, so I also bought, like, styrofoam solar, swords. <laughs> <laughs> How does this play in the Easter story? I don't know. So, they had styrofoam swords that they were, like, jousting and, and smacking each other. Oh, so they got that, like, in their Easter baskets. Right? Yeah, that was in their Easter baskets was um, styrofoam swords. That's funny. They ended up, like, pelting each other with the cascarones and then... Sword yeah. fighting with styrofoam swords. So. Nice. Well, I liked hearing yeah. that story. Yeah. That fun. But um, back to um, what she does. She also, like, one of the other things I like that she does is that she does, her colors are, like, spot on for, like, she does the Star Wars colors. And as everybody knows, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And she did the, um, the Boba Fett. Fett. I'm getting in trouble for saying it wrong. Boba Fett. <laughs> um, yarn. So the stripes, the colors of the yarn are his colors. And um, Do you I have that for my husband. So he has a pair of Boba Fett oh, yeah. yarn socks. So these are the, the Boba Fett socks. Oh, those know. are cool. They're the colors of... Of him, so I made those for him. Yeah, so I made those for him because they're definitely the Boba Fett colors. Like you can see a better picture, like on my Instagram. But uh, she also 
<clears throat> did one that are the Jedi colors, socks. Um, so it's like the Jedi um, lab lightsabers colors. Yeah. Okay. So I had to get that one too. Did you make them already? I did. Let me see if I have them on here. Yeah, these are the Jedi socks that I made. And that's a good picture because it's got the, like, the, the two different. Oh, those are cool. The two different um, skeins of yarn. Yeah, that is a good picture. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I think that's it for this week. We're going to try and um, record a lot more now that we know that this works, right? Right. Yeah, now that things have settled down a little bit, slightly for us. Yeah. We're going to record more and it'll be fun. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, like, in general, we talk on the phone, like, a lot. So just recording yeah. it is not. <laughs> this is what, that's what it feels like to me right now. Yeah. That it's just, kinda, just a conversation. Yeah, it's kind of just our natural thing. Yeah. So you guys stay safe. Yes, stay safe. Keep knitting. Yes, keep knitting. I mm -hmm. know that's our, our sanity right now, so. Yeah. Okay. It's always my sanity, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.